look how this, how there's a, like a perfect semicircle. And the barn's still standing. Yes. 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 No one was the, hurt. The barn is still standing. <laughs> it got hot in there. Yeah. It's a little toasty and smoky. Well, you guys are over here on the, you know, you guys are doing yeah. the right thing. We were over there. Yeah. Putting ourselves in predicaments. Um, can we go over to the other yeah. spot and see all the dead cedars? Just oh, yeah. Yeah, dead yeah cedars, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Can you actually eat it? Oh, yeah. When it's... I'm not going to eat it right now. But... Make sure. Get a little grit. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. It's just hadn't flowered yet. Oh, man. It's strong. Just look at the tall these different mm -hmm. kinds of onions are. So that other onion we we're looking at is a different species, but they're all same family. I guess that's chrome or... They did it over there, too. Those are fairy rings. That's a fairy ring right there. A what? Wow. So I believe that's from a fungus under the ground or some type of microbial activity. You see these all over the United States. Yeah, there's another one over there. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Mycelium wants to live its life as like a spider web underneath the soil. Only when it's disturbed does it shoot up a mushroom, which is a, a thing that shoots out its spores and sends its genetic material. It goes, hey, somebody's trying to kill me. I need to send out my spores and my genetic material. Otherwise, it lives its life as a spider web that also communicates. It's like right. a telephone line mm -hmm. underneath the soil. Yeah, Marissa, fungus is the biggest living organism. Yeah. Yeah. Fungus is among us. <laughs> Man, we are so lucky to know and have met and worked with people like Cole Fagan and Ethan McJames. Those guys are out here and I know it's part of their job, but you know, calling them and having them come out and be a part of this, it's so awesome. You know, something from simply having them draw up a prescribed burn for us has been, uh, and just from there and all the knowledge and experience that those guys have and have brought to our ranch is, is irreplaceable. And so we're very thankful for that relationship and we cannot wait to get the bison out on that land. And, uh, you know, like I've said, there's a lot of work that's gone into the, a lot of work that's gone into this burn unit. And, uh, even from last October, you guys got to go back and watch the fire video if you haven't. And there's, uh, we're not just raising bison out here, guys. We're, there's a whole lot going on in the background. I mean, you hear these native birds out here, you see the wild indigo. There's a reason why the wild indigo's here. There's a reason why um, the birds are here. There's a holistic approach to this thing. We're not, like I said, we're not just raising bison. There's a bigger picture in what's going on in that, in, uh, with, with raising bison. And basically, we're just doing what they used to do back in the day with, with, no, with no humans around. Um, and them managing the landscape naturally in a natural setting. And, and that's what we're, we're doing. And we're using fire. We're paying attention and noticing things and seeing uh, what Mother Earth provides basically by using uh, fire and, and other different tools. But just the knowledge that can come, can bring this all together is awesome. So I appreciate those guys. And Marissa and I are so excited for what's going on on all these pastures. With that being said, we still got some uh, fence repair to, uh, you know, work on a part of this burn unit before we let them out. Uh, I think there's a few spots I need to cover that worry me a little bit. We got creek crossings now that uh, could be so potential areas they could get out, basically. Um, so we've got to um, face those and get those taken care of. The worst thing ever, if they got out, you know, roaming around Murray County, that's my worst fear. That's the last thing we want to happen. Uh, is that it is for them to get out, but we are very excited anticipating to let them out on this burn unit. Um, and it's just exploded with plants, and you heard that from Ethan and Cole. And, um, you know, simple plants like this, wild indigo, that capture nitrogen and put it down into the soil, it's all over our pastures, and it's and it's a beautiful plant. You know, a lot of people would spray this and get rid of it. And uh, that's by their opinion and whatever. Um, and then you've got plants like right here, the blackberries, the wild blackberries, the, an invasive plant that takes up a lot of uh, grazing ground. So um, there's a lot of things, you know, we're trying to treat that and, and, and manage that to get rid of it, just like the cedar trees. But uh, plants like this, you know, are bringing, doing a lot of great things for our pastures, which is for our bison. So, uh, and then you add on to that, then you're, you're encouraging birds because all the 
insect life that these plants bring and it's a complete cycle that goes on out here and we may not actually see it but you got people like cole fagan and ethan that kind of say oh look what's going on here and you're like oh so we're completely learning everything and we're gonna let them out that's the next thing we're gonna let them out and uh hopefully everything goes well and then there's still some monumental things going on guys i can't wait to bring to you marissa and i are excited and uh it's just gonna change it's just gonna change a lot and uh it's gonna be different um so here at the cross timbers bison ranch aka ponderosa we are kind of in a predicament I'm, I'm really trying to get these bison out here as soon as we can uh because these spring grasses only last for so long now this they're not going to eat this wild indigo right here but the spring grasses are only around for so long because as soon as those temperatures go up and summer hits those spring grasses will go back into dormancy or a lot of them will die you got your legumes your forbs and a lot of those plants that are here in the spring like cole and ethan said they're going to go away and then the native grasses your blue stem your native your indian grass those grasses are going to rise up basically and that's when the grazing really takes off so being a part of this they're going to basically come through and graze a lot of these spring grasses down before that summer hits. So we're really anticipating and trying to get some fence work done so we can get those animals out there. So we're we're trying to hustle and get them on that burn unit while we do have the spring grasses so they can get their bellies full, knock down a lot of those spring grasses that are gonna disappear very soon. And summer's just knocking on the door uh, right now because we can feel it from these 80 and 90 degree temperatures and the humidity and then uh, all the native grasses will be coming through. We'll pull them off of the burn unit, let all that come back up, and then we'll be able to come back in and graze it some. So um, still a lot of work to do. Got our work cut out for us and a lot of learning. So thank those guys for all their help. Thank Cole Meager for filming and, and asking questions and, and helping Marissa and I. He's been a, a major uh, part of here, a lot of the stuff we've done here lately. And he was on that burn back in last october helping me film and stuff so i want to thank my good buddy cole meager at meager media hopefully don't get a kung pao oh, yeah. if you think about i mean originally bison were migratory just like birds you know they mm -hmm. follow and it makes that really strong smelling flower and it, oh, it, it's like a circle mm -hmm. and it'll have a bunch of really cool flowers that come out and it's called bee balm for a reason i mean it's pollinators a bunch of flower here cole oh yeah, yeah.